Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So in this uh, video, I'd like to speak about the proof of the most important number theorem that mainstream mathematics academics never learned. And it's important because it underlines why their mainstream calculus is so flawed in formulation and why their understanding is so vague and mysterious and ethereal and none of them actually ever become certain of what they believe in even though some of them think they are uh, certain there's always a doubt so and over and over again students question uh, a particular equality the equality that 0 0.999 is equal to 1 okay so Let's, let's go through the points of this most important number theorem. So what does it say? And I'm not going to go through it in great detail because I'll place a link to the article and you can study it. So it says that given any rational number expressed as P over Q and base B, we can express the measure of P over Q in base B if and only if B contains all the prime factors of Q. You'll notice that this is not taught anywhere in the mainstream. They just don't know about it. And those who do dismiss it because they don't really understand it and they've been uh, trained and educated to believe otherwise now what this is telling you here is that a number a well-formed number such as one-third such as one-third has no base in has no representation in base 10 okay so the common uh, retort is that it has no finite representation, but it has an infinite one. No, that's not true because there is no such thing as an infinite representation. It's baloney. It's a myth. Infinity is a junk concept that doesn't only uh, make this claim of theirs laughable and absurd and makes them appear to be the clowns that they are, uh, but it also shows that the rest of their knowledge is flawed in formulation. So what the theorem is saying, what the theorem is saying is but exactly this, and it, it's also proven, okay? So what I'd like you to do is study this article. It's not very long. And I challenge you, if you like, to <laughs> to try to, to produce... Uh, a retort. Now, you can't use infinity because infinity is a junk concept. The minute you start using infinity, you know, you can throw your hands up in the air, do uh, somersaults and dances, and say anything you actually like. In, in my world, I do not subscribe to the bullshit of George Cantor and his set theory ideas or to Zerman LaFranco axioms. That's all bullshit. Um, and it's not because I'm a constructivist or anything or any other category that people like to uh, attribute to me. It's, it, it is because or it is due to the fact that I'm a genius and I know what I'm talking about and most people don't. So you cannot tell me with any proof whatsoever that a third has a measure in base 10. Now, what about 0 0.999? Well, what the hell is 0 0.999? People don't understand. And in fact, mainstream academics go backwards and forwards. So 0 0.999 is basically shorthand for the series. It's basically shorthand for the series 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09, etc. Okay, that's all it is. It's not a number. It's shorthand for a series. Very important to note that distinguish, that distinguishing characteristic. So, um, the question to ask is not whether 0 0.999 is equal to 1, but whether it makes sense to define it as equal to 1. It doesn't. And there are three normal, three, three uh, usual so-called fake proofs that are provided by the mainstream. There's this 10x proof, which uh, is very easily debunked. That is, if you put an object into x, you multiply the object by 10, and you subtract this first line from the second line, you'll get 9x is 9 times object. So what you get out should be exactly what you put in. So that's what algebra tells us. 
Okay, and if this were true, um, then if it were true that you put in 0 0.999 dot 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 and you get one, then the integrity of algebra fails. Okay, all operations in arithmetic are binary. Did you hear that? All operations in arithmetic are binary and the process finite. There's no such thing as infinite arith arithmetic. So where does this go wrong? Well, it goes wrong right from the second line where the morons of the big, stupid or mainstream mathematics academia assume that multiplication distributes over infinite series. I mean, I can't imagine anything more stupid than that. And this, this malaise started with Isaac Newton. If there was a court, uh, Isaac Newton should be taken to court, you know, and, and sued for this, this, this big, uh, impediment for this uh, misguiding knowledge that he left behind. There is no such thing as an infinite series, you morons. It doesn't exist outside of a dysfunctional mind. Get that into your skulls. So Isaac Newton didn't understand why his calculus works. It took me to explain why Isaac Newton's calculus works. No, not anybody after him either. Not Cauchy, not Weistreis, not any of the morons like Gilbert Strang or any of the other fools in the last 200 years were able to explain. But I did. It takes genius to do that. Most of you are not geniuses. That's why you don't know. So sit up straight, pay attention to what I'm telling you because... I'm the messenger. I'm bringing light and beauty to you. And what you're doing is you're taking the ugliness, the, the, uh, the filthiness, the dirtiness of George Cantor and his rotten ideas, which are not mathematics, and placing it above the beauty and the goodness and the light and the truth that I reveal to you. Or morons are what you are. You, you're unappreciative scoundrels, the, the majority of you in the mainstream. What I tell you here is truth, you baboons. I know better than you or anyone else. It's a fact. It's not delusion. The, the people who are deluded are the ones who say that I'm wrong. So does it make sense to say that 0 0.99 is equal to 1? So far, it doesn't. This is the first 10x proof. The second fake proof is, but 1 third is equal to that. No, it's not. And you know why they like that one? Because then they can say, if, if you swallow this first, if you can swallow this, then you can say three times both sides, and that would give you one is equal to 0 0.999. You see, that's why they love that. And it's a typical uh, thing that they try to do. But what, what destroys this fake proof number two? That's right, you got it. This article here, which mainstream mathematics academics hate proof of the most important number theorem that mainstream mathematics academics never learned. Okay, so read it carefully, study it. You need to study it. Um, so that was the second one. And the last one is you can't find the number. This is so absurd. You can't find a number between 0 0.999. Well, first of all, therefore, there must be the same. Well, first of all, this is not a number. And this, the idea that you can find a number between two numbers means they must both be numbers. 0 0.999 dot 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 is not a number. It's shorthand for a series, you moron. It's shorthand for a series. That and nothing else. Okay. So the three common fake proofs in the mainstream uh, are these. And the question to ask once again is not uh, whether they're equal or not. They're not equal. The, the question to ask is, does it make sense to define seri to define numbers as the limit of series? The quick answer and the, the most uh, revealing answer is no, with capital letters, it doesn't make sense because the limit may not even be a number, okay? It may be some indeterminate uh, uh, quantity that cannot be measured. For example, something like pi or square root two or whatever else. So uh, this is important to bring up because this comes in at every point. And here I show you 
many, many proofs in this article, proof by partial series, uh, proof uh, by set theory, which I don't agree with. I don't believe set theory is valid, but you can prove it using set theory. And this wasn't my proof. It was somebody else's. And uh, also, you know, proof by showing that it's weaved its way into bullshit like Lebesgue measure, Lebesgue measure theory, which is just the most absurd crap you can ever come across. I mean, Lebesgue was just a, a insignificant, insignificant French moron who didn't know what the hell he was doing. So to show that an interval exists as a union, you need to show that a zero term exists. You can't. Anyway, there's another one here. This is my proof by reductio ad absurdum. Study it. You can even pull up a, uh, a computer algebra system and try it. And of course, um, I, I give many other proofs. I give proofs uh, that show that limit theory is doesn't support this claim of theirs, and neither does philosophy. And let's see, there's no valid construction of real number either. Um, also, if you were to do the sort of thing, you could have many names for, you know, numbers, which were not meant to be duplicate. That was, by the way, that was the whole purpose of uh, developing radix systems was to have unique representations. So if you go through this particular section of the article, you'll see that you can actually say 0 0.875 dot 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 is equal to one. Okay. So there are many, many, many problems with this, and all of them are here. You can study this article. There's even proof using the gamma function, okay? And uh, the most damning proof is the one I just showed you, this article, which academic hates, acad mainstream academics hate. And you can see because every now, now and again, somebody will be looking at this article, and it's obvious they are intrigued by it. They are unsure of what they believe now. The whole foundation, their entire world is shaken to the core and they cannot stand truth or change. It's the light is too strong for their weak eyes, their blind eyes, you know. It's, um, it's a terrible thing when a person is presented with overwhelming evidence and they cannot accept it. That is the typical definition of a crank. And that's what mainstream mathematics professors are. They're cranks whose entire belief system is based on the garbage of set theory and the nine ZFC axioms, which are nothing but absolute rubbish. Okay. So, um, please don't peddle this garbage. Don't accept uh, claims made by your moronic educators, your math educators and your lecturers that uh, it, it, it is reasonable to determine a, to define a number as a limit of a series. Just don't, don't accept it. Call them out. Uh, study these things. They're important. Uh, <clears throat> this article is a reason why you, d you didn't have a rigorous formulation of mainstream calculus until I came along. Now you have two. You have the new calculus, which was the first, and you have the historic geometric theorem, which led to the holy grail of calculus, which shows you that you can do calculus without the bullshit of infinity, infinitesimals, or the circular rot of limit theory. I'm John Gabriel. And before I sign off, if you're not a Ray subscriber, become one. Click like, tell your friends about this, follow me on academia, and I'll be chatting with you soon. This is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.